reality, this thing that we all experience, this common space that we're all in, do you believe that as humans we see reality as it is? The B side word. Up a note, Elon Musk is planning to launch satellites. Displaying ads in space. What? Did you hear about this? What do you mean? To who? I don't know. He has one of several billionaires investing in vast sums of space race, space X. Oh, there's a full stop in there. Sorry about that. (laughs) (laughs) Space X launched the satellite with a display screen in 2022. Ad space will be bought using cryptocurrency. What? So wait, is it like a... Are we talking like billboards in space? That's the tweet from... Uh, and AJ replying, Plus. Uh, from AJ Plus. They just said there's going to be... I wonder how big it's going to be. I wonder... <laughs> like how, So at night time, you can see a lit up advertisement in the sky. I mean, it'd have to be pretty so, damn big. That's what... Like, so I... So you took it as an advertisement to the people on Earth. I took it as like an advertisement to people in space. Huh. Which is why I couldn't understand why. So you're thinking like sky writing, but space writing. <laughs> that is- <laughs> I mean, I mean, that is the worst. Inv- Look, the worst investment <laughs> for advertising is sky writing. <laughs> it's Kyron. He's got to be really short, and the guy's the pilot has to be really, really good and quick. Because I don't know how many times I've seen it. By the time they finish the word, the the other shit's flying away. I'm like, what the f- <laughs> what? <laughs> or you see, like, if you're too late as well, if you're not looking at the sky and you just see like <laughs> U- UCK or whatever, but it's not the swear word. It's something like. Um, like uh, delivery truck or whatever, <laughs> and you just see the UCK and the, all the other shit's gone. You're like, what the hell was that? What, what happened there? <laughs> That's a that was a Uck company. I don't know. <sighs> that this is wild. I don't quite. I don't know if I like it. Like polluting the night sky with the nice skies with all these billboards. The lights. Hmm. Bit strange. Yeah. It is. I, mm, I've been watching way too many alien stuff lately to like think about this rationally. Yeah. Because you're thinking is that advertising to the aliens. I thought that's what you meant first off. I thought it was to... And then you said to the people in space. And I was like, hmm, there isn't any. Well, that but then I aliens. thought you meant aliens. Oh. Mm. Yeah. That includes... Yes, like, is, that, is that the idea like, to put it out there Yeah, as a... Just in case someone's passing by. What's that bloody... What are they going to advertise? What's that movie you told us to watch last week, Alexander? Uh, Arrival. um, Arrival. Arrival. That was a good movie. We've watched that before. I haven't. We've watched that before. And uh, the second time, I picked up stuff again. Like, the concept of, like, the whole communication of being able to think the whole uh, paragraph through and then just spitting it out. That's amazing. Yeah, I like that. That's amazing. Yeah. Like the whole concept yeah. of time is put out of, uh, it's put a, put like, it, I mean, the whole concept of time is, uh, it's only us that thinks linear, right? Mm. Man. I don't know. I was thinking today, I wonder if my dog really has a concept of time. Like in a way he would in, but I don't know if that's just physiological, like his belly is growling because he usually eats at this time of day and therefore he comes and sits by the door because he's, or, you know, whatever. Um, But then I was thinking, does he think, does he really get bored? Like, oh, I've just been out here or I'm just like, I feel bored right now. This has been a while. Where, where are they? When are they coming home type thing? Does Wait, he think of time you, like that? Can I go back <laughs> to the belly growling part? His belly is doesn't his belly growl. growling because he usually eats at this time of day. What, as opposed to because he wants it to growl? Like, does that is that what? something we do? Do we sit there and go, "Oi, go on, growl"? <laughs> his belly actually doesn't growl. That yeah. was just that. But I'm just saying. Um, yeah, you just mentioned time, and I was just happening to be thinking about dogs and time and whether they think. Yeah. Of 
or comprehend time so can I similarly in the way to what we do I don't know can I throw your time into a loop you know we look at things from a perspective of space and time space time as it's commonly Mm -hmm. known what about the idea that so okay let me ask you this reality this thing that we all experience this common space that we're all in do you believe that as humans we see reality as it is yeah it's not a trick Mm. question yes (laughs) no Emma's well, doing how do calculations. You <laughs> how do you see it? Well, we can, we, we, there's no way to answer that because I don't think we do because I don't think we're able to. Uh, we only see what we can see, but that, that doesn't mean that's the whole of reality. But what is reality? It's reality is what you see. Mm, that it, reality, I guess, is what we consider to be real, <laughs> that we know. Yes. But is that actually reality in terms of like... Wait, wait, what's the question again? Do you think we experience reality as it actually is? As it actually is. The reason I said no as well I have no idea if I worded it that way the first time, by the way. Oh, okay. (laughs) As as it actually is, probably not. But if we if we we can we experience reality from our perspective, because like you know the whole like it just depends on your perspective whatever that law is, um, if the guy's standing on the platform and he sees the train going past, whereas the person in the train will see his reality, it would be different. Yeah, and even just 2, 2D, 3D, 4D, like the ant looking up, seeing, you know, all that type of thing. He thinks that, he thinks that, uh, anyway, you, you've heard that before. Like, do, you, do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, I, but- I 100% get it. Also, okay. in terms of, get it? yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. in terms of other animals and bugs and insects seeing colors that we can't see, uh, hearing things that we can't hear, there's definitely a lot of things in our reality. Okay, beyond 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 like a spectrum of light, for example, meaning there are colors that you can't see. I'm referring more to the idea that like other realms. In front of you, you're seeing a wall, but that's not actually a wall. What is it? I don't know. Just saying, like, from that perspective of reality. Hi, CJ. CJ has Welcome entered to the, show. the podcast. Oh, la, la, la. Now, CJ, are you looking at a wall? Because it might not be a wall. Um, I don't quite know what you mean yeah, I don't by know what that. You mean. Um, okay, so... I'm going to give you why why I bring this up because I was I've watching I've discovered a YouTuber, um, mm-hmm. Australian lass channel is uh, up and at them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, she does a lot of like paradox stuff, uh, maths related things, but she recently had an existential crisis. Oh, so now she wants to look into reality as well. Okay. And yeah. she did she did a video where. She talked about like old philosophers' point of views, modern day scientists' point of views on reality and all this. I can't remember who it was, but this guy has a, a class as a strong opinion on it, um, and not it's not a well agreed upon opinion, but a very viable possibility. And it's the idea that we don't experience reality as it is, but we have a user interface, oh, um, which is yeah. useful for us to help manipulate reality so for example the idea being on a laptop like you see me right now on the camera but you're not actually seeing like that's not me behind that is lots of bits and all that you don't actually see what i am on your screen you see a representation of me yeah and that helps yeah. you. So the the example they use or she used in the video is like an email. When you see an email on the screen, you see an icon, which is like an, an envelope. 
that doesn't mean an envelope is that icon. That, sorry, it doesn't mean the email is that icon of an envelope. The email is a bunch of bits that get transferred digitally through satellites and all that kind of stuff. But we don't need... If, if we were to see the reality of what the email was, like what made up the email, that would not help us be able to use an email. Like it would make yeah. our lives significantly more difficult. So by seeing reality as it is in terms of that email wouldn't benefit us. So for instance, for instance, the person that makes bricks sees a brick. Whereas if we were able to see the full reality, we might see atoms jumping around all over the place to, which come together to form this brick and different chemical reactions taking place in the making of the brick. We don't see that. We just see the brick. So if you go down to that level, that. but now if you think about, and uh, again, using the email as an example, I said with the bits, right? But there's several layers on top of that that then create that email. Like there's, you know, you have the bits, then you have the base level language, like the, the machine compilation, then you have like the base level language, then you have the interpreted language on top of that, like the coding that creates it. Like even as a coder, I code all day. I don't know everything that goes behind what I'm coding but you don't know everything that goes into what I'm coding to produce what you see mm -hmm. so there's like different layers of manipulation to be able to actually affect the reality of what we're dealing with so the idea then being for us we have a like we have a user interface even though we all say we see the same thing when you look at a desktop we all see the same icon but the icon's still not a representation of what's actually going on there's so many different layers of things going on so there could be, it's not, it doesn't have to go down to the atomic level. Like there could just be a layer behind, like right behind what we see as reality, which would give us a completely different perspective. That's, is she, is she, um, is she a scientist or a mathematician? I think so, yeah. So that's weird. Cause like, um, that's weird that she took the philosophical, philosophical, um, philosophical, that, philosophical, that, that, yeah that um that road because um she like most of the stuff that she would have done would have been peer reviewed and stuff and i don't know how you would test that over and over again that user interface well maybe she's a holistic detective as well ah she joined my band mm. <laughs> but i think yeah because like there was, there was there was a ex existential crisis right yeah, that's when you said yeah. that because like there was this con the conversation between uh jordan peterson and the guy that narrated Mythos, um, oh, what's his name? Let me see his name. The only thing I'm considering is things that are tangible that we have made. Stephen Fry. That's a good conversation. How does that fit in? Because if it's tangible, we've made it. We're looking at it. Unless you're going no, beyond the atomic... It. We've manipulated it. Yeah, but unless but, okay, okay. you are looking at the atomic level, what else could there be behind that first layer? No, no. So, so okay. Let's again. I can, I can build a website that allows you to manipulate the website. Like I can put a, an administration panel in there that allows you to manipulate everything that goes on that. But there's a level behind that, which is the coding, which I did. So you so can still I'm manipulate thinking, something without seeing what's going absolutely, on in the manipulation. I wonder if that theory just uh, is more so in relation to technology rather than tangible man-made materials in the real that's form. Easy, in real form. Well, that's easier to say. It's easier for you to understand from a technological standpoint because we know what the layer behind is. But that's the whole point of this theory is you don't know because you don't know what the reality is. It's a very hard thing to conceptualize. Yeah. You you use the digital concept as a way to conceptualize because it's something you already experience and understand. Yeah, Emma, you, you just brought it up earlier. Like you're never going to understand. Oh, I don't know. I can say never. It's going to be very, very hard for you to understand what... Um, 
because we only see 2D planes. We're, we're, we're a 3D object viewing a 2D plane. So we're never ever, uh, I don't think in our lifetime, are going to be uh, in the 4D to actually see 3D. I think if you if we were in the 4D plane and we saw everything in 3D, the questions that you ask would probably be basic maths in taught in in schools. And then if you went into the 5D and saw everything as a 4D or 3D, that would definitely be kindergarten stuff. <laughs> But for the concepts that we're trying to um, uh, trying to understand in a two D plane, we can't. Well, it's not that we can't. I don't. We haven't. We as normal people haven't experienced it enough to become a normalized thing. That's right. That's we're, why we're I that, say with that girl, yeah, and all the scientists, they constantly pushing and seeing these things. Like you remember that? No, uh, that's why I'm saying. Was I... it the arrival? Yeah. Arrival, and then the, like she started seeing stuff the way the alien saw stuff because she was started to Immerse. communicate yeah. and, and uh, absorb the the culture of that of the of the arrivals. Which yeah, is yeah, that part was interesting. No, that's why I said no in in question in, when I when you answered ugh, when you asked that question because I don't think we do see reality as it is. We can only see it from our con our, our perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting, but yeah, get, yeah, up and at them, YouTube, Australian, up and at them, I'll check them out. The B side word. 